Hello and welcome uh, to the special edition of the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Ola Stefanishina. She is Ukraine's deputy prime minister. Thank you very much uh, for being with us here on France 24. Hello, France. I want to begin uh, with the situation in the port city of uh, Mariupol. Uh, the city council announced that a children's hospital had been destroyed by uh, Russian strikes. Uh, can you confirm this information? And if so, what do you know about this? Uh, in fact, uh, this information is confirmed. It was uh, the maternity hospital when the newborn kids and their mothers uh, were uh, were present. Uh, it has been shelled from air attack a number of times, and uh, the building is is destroyed. Uh, there are um, a lot of victims among newborns and 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 their mothers. The information has been now um, uh, verified uh, on the number of those people who died and suffered and were, uh, were wounded. Uh, in fact, uh, this has been taking place on the third day where Ukraine were trying to arrange with Russia through the uh, International Red Cross Organization on the humanitarian corridors for evacuation of population. And it has never happened. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, 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 more uh, crimes against civilian population has been having place in Mariupol since that time. Right. Uh, are there any uh, military facilities around uh, that hospital or do you consider this a deliberate strike on a clearly identified civilian place? Uh, we can make conclusions following the last uh, uh, couple of days of this military aggression when Russian Federation has started the new phase of this war, uh, which is targeted exactly to attack the civilian population and civilian objects of uh, infrastructure, including bombing hospitals, households, and, uh, and um, uh, different elements of social infrastructure. So there's no doubt that this, is, this has been a targeted attack. Uh, uh, in fact, over these days, more than 50 children has died from different uh, from different aggressive military actions of Russian Federation. We understand that this is part of the Russian plan to uh, um, to um, to uh, ensure that the people are afraid uh, uh, afraid. They have the fear, the panic. And we are doing our best to ensure that the people could be evacuated to the safe part of the territory of Ukraine and they could be refrained from this aggressive terroristic actions of the Russian Federation. So uh, all the uh, discussions about uh, humanitarian uh, corridors, I mean, uh, we've seen in some places uh, of Ukraine that this was indeed being implemented, if not totally, at least partially. I mean, do you think that after uh, what just happened in Mariupol, uh, there's no need to continue talking because you estimate that the Russians do not keep their word? Uh, we never expected that Russian Federation would keep their word. That's why we uh, ensure that each and every element of our discussion is verified and confirmed through the International Red Cross Organization. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, the uh, minor evacuation of Ukrainian people from Sumy and other parts of Ukraine has been um, uh, has been uh, achieved because of the. A component of international citizens, foreign citizens, which has been uh, subjected to evacuation, which means that Russia is targetly trying to genocide and assassinate Ukrainian citizens of Ukrainian origin. And um, of course, uh, Ukrainian, the life of each and every Ukrainian citizen is, is something which is valued more than anything in the world by us. That's why we will never stop any attempts to save our people and ensure their security. Today, the Russian Foreign Ministry said that there had been, I quote them, some progress in the talks. Uh, this Thursday, your Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba is scheduled to meet with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, uh, in Turkey. Uh, given uh, what you're describing on the ground, do you have any hope that the diplomatic path can still be successful? Uh, we uh, have, of course, uh, rather limited expectations from this meeting, but uh, from 
as I've mentioned just before, we will use each and every opportunity which would be available to us to ensure that there is a negotiation, the ceasefire and withdrawal of Russian troops of, from Ukrainian territory are becoming possible. Uh, definitely, we will not go into any discussions which would serve the goal of legitimization of any actions taken on the territory of Ukraine and le legitimization of the tyrannic and terroristic acts happening now in our country. Your President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, said this Wednesday that the international community would be responsible for, I quote him, a mass humanitarian catastrophe if it did not agree to a no-fly zone to protect Ukraine. We know this no-fly zone has been refused again and again by the U.S., by NATO, by most European uh, countries. Do you think that this is really the only solution to stop the Russian aggression, or are you considering other means? Uh, well, first of all, of course, we're talking about uh, no-fly zone as a uh, humanitarian measure which should be taken. And we still have hope that UN system can take this measure, and we severely advocate for that. Uh, from our perspective, thinking uh, of the consequences of taking this action is less important than understanding what are the consequences of not taking this action. Uh, uh, since, since the discussion has been there, since the war started, more than 2,000 of Ukrainian citizens have fallen, and there are numerous, numerous cases of people who died from air attacks, including today's attack on the maternity hospital and many other hospitals around Ukraine. All of these lives could have been saved. All of this suffering could have been stopped. But the decision has not been taken. We're doing our best to ensure that we have the necessary capability to, uh, to have the air defense system, uh, but still uh, it's about the humanitarian dimension of that. And let me remind you that the war which is now happening in Ukraine, it's not happening by NATO standards or in line with the UN Charter. It's happening in a brutal, unlawful, unjustified and unprovoked way. So that, that, that's why what we're calling to, we're not calling to anything else but the political leadership and the political commitment which will be aligned with the words and action taken to stop this war and protect the citizens of Ukraine. Uh, what about getting fighter jets? Is this uh, pretty much still on the table? Uh, in Ukraine, everything which can support and strengthen our defense capacity is on the table. Uh, we utilize all the possible options for these discussions. So, uh, so uh, yes, I can confirm that things are on the table, but no further details on this issue. Right. Uh, one incident uh, among the many uh, during uh, today uh, was the announcement by the Ukrainian state operators that Russian forces had disconnected the Chernobyl nuclear plant from uh, the electric uh, grid, adding that some radioactive substances could be released. Uh, so uh, there was some concern. The uh, International Atomic Energy Agency said there was no reason uh, to be uh, concerned on safety grounds. What is uh, your take on what is happening at the Chernobyl nuclear plant? Uh, well, Chernobyl nuclear plant has been captured by Russia and within the first 24 hours after the beginning of the of the war and the Russian army intend to have the negotiation to make sure uh, that they can put ultimatums by threatening the military aggression on this part of uh, uh, on this nuclear station we have uh, uh, we have done our best to make sure that it is not happening while Russians are trying to continue their regross, um, aggressive and ultimate rhetorics uh, we managed to uh, do our job distantly to switch back um, our Chernobyl station from uh, uh, with, the, with the electricity, although the consequences of not succeeding that from Ukrainian side would lead that for uh, the next 48 hours, the ventilation system of the, um, uh, of the Chernobyl shelter will stop working and the level of radiation would spread uh, with an uncontrolled manner around the territory of Europe. So you're saying, contrary to what the IAEA said, that there is a security issue, uh, that this has not been resolved, and there is a nuclear uh, safety problem at the Chernobyl plant as we speak, correct? 
just a half an hour ago, I received the information that it was temporarily resolved, but we are not uh, insured uh, or protected from any other assassinations or attacks uh, which can be taken by Russian side. So we have uh, uh, reached uh, the Magate and Euratom with immediate request to uh, hold uh, some measures to ensure the security of all the nuclear objects around Ukraine and to ensure that they are under control and the monitoring of these international organizations. Just uh, as a conclusion, do you think this is accidental or intentional? Uh, as I have said, within the last, within the first 24 hours after the Chernobyl station has been captured, we have been reached by Russian army officers putting us ultimatums. So they're doing this job or implementing the orders and they are uh, using this as another instrument of aggression, uh, trying to, um, uh, let's say, promote the agenda that Ukraine is a, is a, is a nuclear state. But it's not Ukraine holding the threat. We've been saving the world from this threat for uh, the last 35 years after Chernobyl. Hola, uh, Stefan Ishina, uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine. I want to thank you very much uh, for taking some of your uh, precious uh, time and appearing here on the France 24 interview. Thank you all for watching it. Stay tuned for more news.